Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about how to create the binary search tree. We have seen the programming using the iterative and the recursive approach. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the evil tree insertion process. And that will be uh, the creation of the balanced binary search tree. And uh, we will be taking the binary search tree recursive process as a base for writing the algorithm or writing the code for evil tree. Let's look at the scenario. You must be knowing that when we create the binary search tree, and uh, uh, if I let the tree grow freely, then the tree can become skewed towards one side. For example, if I'm inserting 100, then a 50, then a 20, then a 10, and then a 5, then you can see that my tree is going towards the left side only. So this is the left skewed tree. If the tree is created like this, if I perform the search, the search operations can be carried out in the worst time, that is order of n. So I have to avoid this order of n time to come. For that, I will have to make our tree balanced. And if I make my tree balanced, then the search operations can be performed in the log n time. So the binary search tree, if the if if binary search tree which is create which has been created is made balanced, then the balanced binary search tree can be referred to as the avil tree. And in this lecture, we will learn about how to create the avil tree, and we'll see how to code this. For doing the balancing act we need four rotations. So LL, LR, RL, and RR are the four rotations that we can carry out for doing the balancing act. There is a concept of the balance factor. Before understanding the rotations, let's understand the concept of the balance factor. Let's say I have a binary search tree of kind 100, 50 and 150. You can see that the left side of 100 is going up to level 1 and right side of the 100 is also going towards the level number 1. So if I find out the height of left and minus height of right, then this will be telling us the balance factor. So for node 100, the balance factor is 1 minus 1, that is 0. So 0 is the balance factor. It means the tree is perfectly balanced, or the tree starting at 100 is perfectly balanced. If I take the balance factor of node 50, it does not have the left child. It does not have the right child. So its balance factor will be 0. So we can say that a leaf node is having balance factor 0. And in the tree, if all the nodes are having balance factor 0, it means tree is perfectly balanced. Let's take some other scenario. If I have a tree like this, then the balance factor of this node can be found as, let's level this tree. So this is level number 0, level number 1, and level number 2. For this node or the root node, the left is going up to the level 1 and right is going towards the left level number 2. So 1 minus 2 means minus 1 is the balance factor of this node. And this node is a leaf node, hence its balance factor will be 0. All the leaf nodes will have a balance factor 0. For this node, the tree towards the left is going up to level number 2. And towards the right also, it is going towards the level number 2. Hence, 2 minus 2, 0 is the balance factor of this node. So if in my tree, the balance factor is 0 or minus 1, minus 1 balance factor is also acceptable. 0 is perfectly balanced, but minus 1 balance factor is also acceptable. If I take another scenario, and my tree is like this. For this tree, 
all the leaf nodes will have the balance factor zero. So I'm writing zero inside all the leaf nodes as that it is denoting the balance factor. Let's mark the balance factor of all of the nodes. So I have leveled the tree. For the root node, the left child, left subtree is a going to going to level number two. So HL is two in this case. The right subtree is going up to level number one. So HR is one. So two minus one means one is the balance factor of the root. If I consider this node, for this node, left is moving or left is growing up to two level. Right is also growing up to two level. So two minus two, zero is the balance factor of this. So if in the tree, the balance factor of the nodes are one or zero, this is, this is acceptable. So the balance factors one, zero and minus one is acceptable. But if you are finding the balance factor more than two or less than minus one, it means two or minus two, this is not acceptable. And the moment if I find any node is having the balance factor two or minus two, I should apply the balancing act by the rotations. Let's take an example. If I have a tree like this, 100 is the root node, 50 is the node which is inserted towards the left, and there is a node 20 which is to be inserted. So 20 will be inserted toward the left of 50. So if I find out the balance factor in this case, then we will have to mark the levels, zero level, one level and the two level. For node 100 of the root node, left is growing up to level number two and right, there is no right uh, subtree. So the right subtree's uh, height will be considered as zero. So two minus zero means two is the balance factor of the root node. For this node, left node is up to level number two, right node does not have uh, the uh, right child. So th there is no right subtree of this. So the level of this node will be considered as the level of the right subtree. So the left subtree is having level two, right subtree is having level one. So difference of these two is one. So one is the balance factor for this node. And since 20 is a leaf node, the balance factor is zero. You can see that all the nodes are not balanced. Zero is acceptable, one is acceptable, but this two is not acceptable. So if I am finding this balance factor two, it means I will have to apply the rotations. So what rotation I'm going to apply, this depends on the node has got inserted in which direction. So I will have to consider that root node or 100 node is unbalanced. And with respect to the unbalanced node, the insertion took place towards the left of left. The insertion took place towards the left of left. So we will have to perform the LL rotation. So what is LL rotation? LL rotation simply means we have to rotate the unbalanced node towards the right or clockwise. So if I move this or rotate this node clockwise, the answer that I will obtain will be 50 will become the new root, 100 will come towards the right of 50, and 20 will remain same towards the left of 50. So if you see that the tree is perfectly balanced now. So this LL rotation means the insertion took place towards the left of left with respect to the unbalanced mode. So every rotation is performed with respect to the unbalanced mode. So the LL rotation has done this. Similarly, if I take another scenario, if I have a node 100 and then we have a node 150, and recently the information 200 has got inverted. So since 200 information has got inserted, the balance factor of node 100 becomes minus two. Balance factor of this node is minus one and 200 is a leaf node, so its balance factor will be zero. So the tree is unbalanced. We will have to balance this. The unbalanced node is the root node with respect to which the insertion took place, took place towards the right of right. Hence, I will have to do the RR rotation. The meaning of the RR rotation is that I have to rotate the unbalanced node anti-clockwise 
or towards the left. So the result of this rotation will be 150 becomes the new root, 100 comes towards the left of 150 and 200 comes towards the right of 150. So this tree is perfectly balanced now. Let's look at another scenario. If I have this node 100 and the node which is to be inserted is let's say 80. So 80 will come towards the right of 50. So the new node which is to be inserted is 80 and it will come towards the right of 50. If I compute the balance factor, then the balance factor of node 100 will become 2 because left subtree is going up to level 2 and right is and there is no right subtree of this node. So the balance factor of root node is 2, 2 minus 0. And the balance factor of this node is minus 1 because this is 1 minus 2. On left hand side, there is no subtree. Right side means to, uh, in, on the right subtree, there is only 80 which is at level number 2. So 1 minus 2 minus 1 is the balance factor. And 0 is the balance factor of node 80. Now the unbalanced node is 100. With respect to this, the insertion took place towards the left of right. So I am going to perform LR rotation. This is the double rotation. It means I will have to perform the rotation twice. So first I will perform L rotation and then I will perform R rotation. So the unbalanced node is this. Let's take the left of this node as Y and let's rotate this towards the left. Once you rotate towards this left, the tree, like, tree look like this, 100, 80, and 50. And then you have to rotate the unbalanced node towards the right. So first the left rotation and then the right rotation. The tree now comes or tree now looks like this. The tree is perfectly balanced. So I first perform the L means left rotation and then I perform the right rotation. Let's see another scenario. Let's say I have the information 100 and here we have 200. The newly inserted information is let's say 120. The balance factor of node 100 becomes minus 2. For 200, the balance factor becomes 1. And 120 is the leaf node, hence its balance factor will be 0. So the unbalanced node is this root node 100. And with respect to this, the insertion took place towards the right of left, towards the right of left. So I will have to perform the RL rotation. For performing the RL rotation, let's say this is X node. Let's take Y as the right of X and rotate this Y towards the right. So I am just performing the right rotation. So when I rotate this node towards the right, the tree becomes like this. After the right rotation, the unbalanced node X is rotated towards the left. So I'm performing the left rotation now. The tree becomes like this, 120, 100, and 200. So this is perfectly balanced. Now, we have already have discussed four kinds of the rotations. One is LL, RR, LR, and RL. A very brief information or very brief observation. Let's say my tree is like this. And I have inserted the information or the newly inserted information is this red node. And I'm going to perform the right rotation. For performing the right rotation, forget about the LL, LR, RL, and RR. Just say that I'm going to rotate this right. Let's say this node is Y. If I'm going to rotate this node towards the right, let's say this node is Y and this node is Z. So if I'm rotating this, X will, becomes, X will come towards the right of X. 
right of y. Let's mark this node as w. W is already there towards the left of y. But if you see, z node was already there towards the right of y. I have now brought a new node x towards the right of y. z has got lost, but this cannot be allowed. So what I will do, I will insert this z towards the left of x. So since z was towards the right of y, so I have inserted this z towards the left of the rotated node that is x. Simil similar condition may arise for the left rotation also. Let's say my tree is this. And a new node has been inserted just now here. I have to perform the rotation with respect to this x. It means x has to be rotated towards the left. If I mark y towards the right of x and z here and w here, if I rotate this, so the tree will become like this, y and x towards the left of this. w is already there towards the right of y. While rotating, if I have brought this x towards the left of x, it means the information z is lost or the node z is lost. So I will have to insert this towards the right of x. So you can see that since z is towards the left of y, I am inserting this towards the right of x. In the earlier case, in this example, z was towards the right of y. So I inserted this towards the left of x. So just the reverse is done. If it is towards the right, I'm making it left. If it is towards the left, I'm making it towards the right. So having known all these things, let's now write the algorithm for the rotations. So for implementing LL, LR, RL, and RR rotations, I need two rotations. One is the left rotation, or let's write it as rotate left. So rotate left means a T node is given, sorry, a X node is given. Rotate left means a scenario like this that we just have discussed. So this is X, this is Y, and let's say here we have Z. So X is going to be insert in uh, rotated towards the left. So for rotating it toward the left, it will come toward the left of Y. So let's say y is the left of x. Only x is given, so I will have to mark this, these y and z. And let's take z as left of, sorry, just a minute. y is x dot right. And z is y dot left. So this y is towards the right of x, and this z is towards the left of y. When I will when I will rotate this, the tree will become like this. Y will become my new new root, and X will come towards the left of Y. So I'm setting this X as Y dot left, and then this Z would have been would have got lost. So I will set it towards the right of x. So x dot right is equal to z. Since this tree has a new root root y, so from this algorithm itself, I will return a new root that is z, sorry, y. So rotate left is completed. I will write rotate right now. For writing the rotate right, let's say we have a scenario like this. This is the x node, which is to be rotated. So the function is rotate right and x is given. 
let's consider this node as y and this node as z. So y is equals to x dot left and z is equals to y dot right. Then I will rotate this x towards the right. The tree will become like this. Y will be the new root node. X will come towards the right of y. So y dot right is equals to x. But towards the right of y, z was already there. So since we do not want this information to get lost, so this z will be set towards the left of x. So x dot left is equals to z. Y is the new root of this tree. So I will return this y from here. So this is the rotate right. Now let's come back to all the rotations we have discussed. What was LL rotation? This is the unbalanced node. The insertion took place towards the left of left of the unbalanced node. So we perform LL rotation. What is LL rotation? We are rotating it towards the right. So it means the LL rotation is nothing but it is the rotate right operation. So we are rotating this x node towards the right. The new root is let's say y and I will return this new root. So this is the LL rotation. Similarly, the RR rotation. What happens in the RR rotation? This is the unbalanced node. And with respect to the unbalanced node, the insertion took place towards the right of right. It means I have to perform the RR rotation. What happens in the RR rotation? We rotate this node towards the left. So the RR rotation is nothing but the rotate left operation. And a new root is created, let's say that is y. And I will return this new root. So this is the RR rotation. Let's write the LR rotation now. For performing the LR rotation, which is the double rotation, the scenario is like this. This node is unbalanced. And with respect to this, the insertion took place towards the left of right. It means I will have to perform the LR rotation. For performing the LR rotation, I first rotate this node towards the left. It means I should have the information about this node. So I'm writing the LR rotation. And this node is X node. Let's take this node as Y. So Y is equals to X dot left. I will first perform the rotate left operation on Y. If I perform the rotate left operation, then a new root will come up for this subtree. But whatever new root is coming, that is not linked to X. Y was linked to X, but the new root will not be linked to X. I will have to link that node with the X. Let's say this is Z and it rotates right and comes like this. Rotates left and comes like this. Z and X are unconnected. I will have to connect this Z and X. Fine. So let's say the new root is Z and I will have to set this Z towards the left of X. The final call will be of rotating this node or the rotating the unbalanced node, the X node. So let's rotate right the X node and let's say the new root by this is T and let's return this T. So this is the LR rotation. In the similar fashion, we can write the RL rotation. Now let's write the RL rotation then. So I have a scenario like this. This is a node which is unbalanced. 
And this unbalanced node, with respect to this unbalanced node, the insertion took place towards the right of left or right and then left. So this node is unbalanced. So the information or the address of this node is given. Let's say that address is X. So for performing the RL rotation, we first have to rotate this node as right, but we don't have the address of this node. So let's say this node is Y. So what is Y? Y is X dot right. I have rotated this Y node towards the right. It means I have to perform the rotate right operation starting from Y. Let's say the new root, no, new root which comes up is Z. But this new root is not linked with X. I will have to link this with X. So X dot right is equals to Z. After this, I will have to perform the final rotation, which is rotate left the X node. So I'm calling the rotate left operation on the X node. And let's say after the rotation, the new root comes as T. Let's return this T. So this is the RL rotation. So this is the T node which is the R rotation. Then we will have to write the BST insert, uh, avial insertion function. For writing the avial insertion function, let's recall what we, wrote, what we wrote in the binary search tree recursion, uh, binary search tree insertion recursively. So when we wrote the binary search tree insertion recursively, I'm just writing it here. And this BST insert, BST insert function in which we have the address of the root node and a data item X, which has been inserted, which is to be inserted. Here, I wrote that if T is null, then you have to create a new node with information X and we consider that this is the P node. But if this new node, uh, the, but this T node, if it is not null, then I was either inserting this towards the left or towards the left, depending on if this X information is less than T dot data or greater than T dot data. So if this is less than T dot data, then I was inserting towards the left. So BST insert function calling this recursively with the address of E dot left and information X. And then we were setting it towards the left. Otherwise, I was inserting towards the right. Purposefully, I'm taking some space. So T dot right is equals to BST insert T dot right comma x. And finally, we were returning the newly created node or t. So in the last, we were returning it. Okay. Now, if I'm performing the uh, avial insertion, then there is a possibility of the disturbance of the balance factor. So after every insertion, we need to check the balance factor of the T node. So if the balance factor of this T node has got unbalanced or is not in the range, what we what were the acceptable ranges? Minus one, zero, and one was the acceptable range. Minus two and plus two were the unacceptable to this. Now, if I, if you consider if I, if my node has got inserted towards the left, then the balance factor can be positive. It means the balance factor can be two. It can, it cannot be minus two. So if it is getting towards, uh, if, if it is getting inserted towards the left of the T node, 
then the balance factor can be plus 2. So if the balance factor of this node is 2, it means my balance factor has got disturbed. So if the balance factor has got disturbed, then I will have to take the corrective action. Corrective action means we will have to perform the rotation. Now see here. This is the this is the T node. And let's say X data has got inserted here. So this X data must have been less than the data item of left of T node. Okay, so this is the T node. This will be T dot left. And X will be less than the data item of T dot left. Then only it must have got inserted here. And if it has got inserted here, then I will have to perform the LL rotation. So let's write it here. We'll see another scenario later. So what I'm saying that if X is less than T dot left dot data, it means left, if the X was inserted towards the left of left, it means LL rotation should have been performed. And after performing the LL rotation, the new root will be created. I'm saying that the new root is also T. Then I'm going to perform on I'm, now I'm going to check another scenario also. Let's say this X data item, which has got inserted towards the left is not inserted towards the right. This may also be the condition. In this case, also the balance factor can be plus two. It cannot be minus two. So, if the X data item which is inserted is greater than the left dot data, then it is going to, to be inserted towards the right. And we need to perform the LR rotation in case we want to balance this. So it means here I'm writing else. And the LR rotation is performed on T node and the new root, let's say that is T. Fine. So the similar uh, additions will be done towards the right also. Let's write this return T somewhere towards the end. And now, if by the insertion towards the right, if the balance factor has got disturbed, if I'm inserting the nodes towards the right, then the balance factor can be negative. It means it may be minus two. So if it is minus two, it means this is the matter of concern for us. And I will do the balancing act in case we want to balance this. So if the balance factor of the T node is minus two, it means the corrective action is required to be taken. Let's check that whether where has it got inserted. If the X data item has got inserted towards the right of right of T node, then we need to perform the RR rotation. And in case it has got inserted towards the right, to, towards the left of this right node, it means T dot right is this node, and the X has got inserted towards the left of this T dot right, then the RL rotation is required to be performed. So just write it here. If X is greater than T dot right dot data, then the insertion which is required to be performed is RR. And the new root which is created, let's take it to T. Otherwise, I need to perform the RL rotation. And let's say the new root is T. Whether I perform the LL, uh, LL rotation, whether I perform the LR, whether I perform the RR, or whether I perform the RL rotation, there is a problem which has got created. The problem is that the path towards which this uh, AVL insertion function or BST insertion function has got called, all the nodes have got their heights changed. So I will have to update the heights of each of the node towards the path. For example, if I say this is the tree, And let's say the newly inserted node is this one. And for this newly inserted node, let's say 
this is the t from where i would have started the root node i must have moved here then i must have moved here and then I'm, i must have moved here and then the x must have got in that while going back recursively when i reach here the balance factors are correct when i reach here i see that i observe that the balance factors are not correct it means i will have to do the rotations if i perform the rotation including this node and towards the upward of this node the height of every node must have got changed so i need to update the height of each of the node so what i'm considering here that along with the three parameters that are usual with the every binary search tree node it means left data and right i say that there is a h factor which is the height and we will have to set the height of the t node as or we will update the height of this t node by calling the height function which will correct the height then i will return this t let's try to understand once again what i said i will have to update the height of each of the node falling in path of the call of this recursive function and we are taking this h as a parameter so this height whatever height we find is set in the parameter h of the given node now since the uh, height is the thing uh, that we need to calculate every uh, with, with every insertion process so i will have to write the algorithm for the height also let's say i am finding the height of the node t see here it is said that the height of every node is already being uh, set while we are inserting so it means that Uh, when we are writing the make node function for creating a node i will set the height of that node as 0 obviously if the new node is created that will be created as a leaf node hence the height of the leaf node should be set as 0 so i have a h parameter let's say i have hl and hr parameter so which is the height of left and height of right so let's say i am finding the height of any node let's say this is the tree let's say the height of this node is 0 and height of this node is 0 because this is the leaf node so if i am finding the height of the leaf node and its left is null so i will consider that hl is 0 and its right is null so i will consider the hr is also 0 fine now if i am finding the height of this node then its left exists so the hl for this node will be equals to 1 plus height of the left node in this case it will be 1 plus 0 similarly hr will be equal to 1 plus height of the right node so height of the right node is 0 so 1 plus 0 so hl is 1 and hr is also 1 i take the maximum of these two and that will be the height of this node so maximum of this two will be 1 so height of this node has been set as 1 if i consider this node for this hl is 0 hr is 0 because its right is null so the maximum of 0 and 0 will be 0 it means the height of this node is 0 if i am considering this node or the root node for this hl is 1 plus height of left node it means 1 so 1 plus 1 hl is 2 similarly if i consider hr then 1 plus the height of the right node which is 0 this node has a height 0 so 1 plus 0 is hr maximum of 2 and 1 will be 2 which is the height of this node so let's write this in the form of the algorithm if i am finding the height of any node and that node is null obviously the height of that node will be zero but if that is not null then i am going to check the left of that 
So if the t dot left is null, it means HL is zero. Otherwise, HL is equals to one plus T dot height, or if that node is T, so the left of that node will be T dot left, and its height is the H parameter. So HL is equals to one plus T dot left dot height. Similarly, we have to find the right node. So if T dot right is null, it means the right node does not exist. So HR will be zero. Otherwise, HR will be equals to one plus T dot right dot height. Since we already have found HL and HR, we just need to find the maximum of HL and HR. So whatever is the maximum of HL and HR, that will be the height of given node T, and I can return that. So this is the algorithm for finding the height. As we have found the height of left and height of right, and we have returned the maximum of HL and HR, which is the height of this node or the given node. In the similar fashion, we can find out the balance factor. If I already have the information of HL and HR, then the balance factor of any node will be equals to HL minus HR. So instead of returning this maximum, if I return HL minus HR, this will become the balance factor. So I just need to make a correction of this only, and this becomes the algorithm for the balance factor. Since we already have for the information about the insertion process, the rotations, the balance factor, the height, and the insertion function, let's look at the program and see how to write the code for the a -Vector. So this is the a tree program. They had a file input output or standard input output and a standard lib, a standard library. This is the structure of the node. Apart from the three usual information that we take in the binary tree, we take a H parameter also, which is the height. This is the make node function, which creates the node with the information x, the memory is created by the malloc, the data item is set as x, left of that node is set as null, right is also set as null, and height is set as zero. The newly created node will have a height zero. And then finally, I return this one. Let's come to the a will insertion function. This is the a will insert function. If my t is null, you create a node and make this node as t. Otherwise, if x is less than t dot data, call the left, uh, call the recursive, uh, the same function recursively and insert towards the left. While insertion, if the balance factor becomes two, you check if the node has got inserted towards the left, off left of the given node, perform the LL rotation, otherwise perform the LR rotation. Similarly, if the node is going to be inserted towards the right, if the node is going to be inserted towards the right, in that case, if the balance factor of the given node becomes minus two, and the data item has got inserted towards the right of the T data, perform the RR rotation, otherwise perform the RL rotation. If you are inserting the node, certainly uh, on the falling path, the heights must have got changed. So you call the height function to find out the height of the T node, and you set the height of that node, or you set the H parameter of that node. Finally, return this T. We need to write the uh, rotation functions also. So whatever we have written in the algorithm, the same are written here. First, I have written the rotate left function. Then I have written the rotate right function as in the algorithm. The LL rotation is nothing but the rotate right operation. Whatever new root has been created, it done that. RR is rotate right, rotate left. 
So rotate left function is called. The new root is created. Return that new root. For the LR or uh, LR rotation, I first need to perform the rotate left operation, then the rotate right operation, and the new root is created, which is return. Similarly, for the RL, we first need to perform the rotate right, then we need to perform the rotate left. The new root is created, and finally we return the new root. The height function. The height function says that H L and H R are the two parameters that we will compute. If t is null, return zero. If t dot left is equal to null, set H L as zero. Otherwise, H L equals to one plus t dot left dot h. Similar is the condition with the right. If t dot right is null, set H R as zero. Otherwise, set H R as one plus t dot right dot height. You have to return the maximum of H L and H R. So the conditional statements. The balance factor is much similar. You just need to change the last line in the height function. There you are returning the maximum of H L and H R. Here you have to return difference of H L and H R. Once you have inserted the nodes, you will have to check whether the tree created is correct or not. For that, you need to perform the in order traversal. LDR is the process of the in order traversal, in which you first traverse towards the left recursively, then you print the data, and then you traverse towards the right recursively. So here is the main where the root has been set as null initially, and then we are calling the avil insert function multiple times. Every time a root is root is returned, I am accepting that input. Finally, I am calling the in order traversal function. So now just check if the function works fine. So you can see that whatever information you have inserted, that is coming in the ascending sequence. It means that. my avial insertion works fine thank you i hope you must have understood the avial insertion process the avial insertion process is very simple it just it is just that you stick to the conditions of the rotations you implement the rotation functions using the left rotation and the right rotations in the next lecture we will come up with a new topic related to the tree Thanks for watching.